G'day guys, it's Jim, back with another RuneScape 3 video, and in this one we're going to talk about what I do not recommend new players or returning players to RuneScape 3 do. Now remember, this is what I don't recommend. I'm not saying don't do it at all, because obviously you're you, you can do whatever you want, but from my experience and what I have learned over the past four or five months of coming back to RuneScape 3, these are the things that I wish I didn't do, and from what I now know. Number one, and I think you guys can see this coming, is don't play on Legacy. Now, the reason for this is many of new RuneScape 3 content revolves around mechanics that abilities offer, such as freedom and devotion. Plus, certain abilities such as Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast will allow you to hit multiple enemies at once in a chain reaction, meaning more damage per second and better XP rates. And as I previously mentioned with Devotion, some abilities can actually stop you from taking damage for a short while or even heal you, meaning that you can stay in a place for longer and you won't need as much food. Tip number two. Remember the Dragon Defender, the Abyssal Whip? Those combinations are now pretty much obsolete in RuneScape 3. Again, I'm not saying you can't use them, however, there is much better options out there, such as the Necronium Two-Handed Battle Axe. You can use a Rune Halberd, a Dragon Halberd, because in RuneScape 3, it's not just about attacking one monster anymore. It's usually about Air of Effect and attacking multiple monsters at the one time to maximize your XP. Plus, there is a new training method, which means that you will not spend much time on the level 60 to 80 skills anyway for combat, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Tip number three, don't go using Teletabs and spells as we now have Lodestones. RuneScape 3 now has Lodestones that are positioned in most of the main locations around the land, such as Lumbee and Fally. So don't go wasting money on Teletabs for any location of a Lodestone. Obviously, if the place you're going to doesn't have a lodestone, feel free to still use the spells and obviously the teletab, but I suggest using the lodestones as it's a free method to teleport. And if you want to make these teleportations even faster, you can use a new item which is called Vizwax. I suggest looking into that one. Tip number four, playing without being in a clan. This one is massive. One, you won't have many people to talk to and ask for advice, but two, and more importantly, the clan can give you a huge XP boost, saving you over 21 million XP if you were to take a brand new account and max it while being in a clan. If you don't want to max your account and you just want a specific 99, well, from level 1 to 99, you're going to save over 700k XP from being in the clan. If you want to learn more about this, there is a video of mine linked in the description below. Tip number five, which is fishing and woodcutting. So fishing at places like Barbarian Village, Karimja, the Fishing Guild, all of these places are now obsolete after level 60. Like myself, this is probably how you trained on old school and you probably camped Barbarian Village for a long time. Now we have this brand new city, which is called Menafos, which is unlocked by completing the Jack of Spades quest. I suggest doing this as soon as possible because once you're fishing at Menafos, you will get access to a much higher tier XP rate as well as a deposit box right next to the fishing spot, meaning that you can either sell it or you can get yourself some pretty cheap fishing XP as well as cooking XP. Within Menafos is also one of the best woodcutting XP per hour spots, so again, it's definitely what I recommend doing and not fishing at the above mentioned places. Tip number six, I don't recommend using random abilities. Now, if you're new to RuneScape 3, I know that revolution can seem a little bit scary, but do not place random abilities that you don't understand what they do. I suggest taking the time to actually read about abilities and understand if it's a one monster attack or an area of effect attack, because that is basically how you want to build your ability bar. If you're attacking a monster that you can kill multiple of them at once, they all hoard together in one area, you want to focus on having more area of effect attacks on your action bar. If it's a monster that is probably just a solo monster on its own, well then you want to obviously tailor your combat to that particular monster as well. With the ability of having multiple action bars, you can switch between each monster and you don't have to add and change your abilities between each one. All you have to do is toggle your action bar. 
Now, obviously when you start out, you won't have access to every single ability, but adding the ones that you do have will go a long way to getting better XP rates and making your kills a lot faster. If you're not sure about any of this, I've linked the RuneScape wiki on action bars down in the description below. Tip number seven. Much like the fishing, I don't recommend training at Rock Crabs, Hellhounds, the Abyss, or Bandits as there is now a much better method, which I alluded to before. This new area is called Elite Dungeons 3. And inside Elite Dungeons 3, you can get XP rates of over 1 million XP per hour, as well as making over 5 million GP per hour. This means if you're maxing your account or making money is your goal, training in the Elite Dungeon is going to be a lot faster than training at any of those previously mentioned spots. Again, I'm not saying that you can't do it. If you wanted to go and relive your memories and do that, you still can. However, you are missing out on a huge chunk of XP and money by not training at the Elite Dungeons 3. Once again, I've tried to help you guys out as much as possible. There is a link to my guide for this in the description below. Tip number eight. Now this is the most controversial one, but in my opinion, right, this training style since the release of EOC has been rendered obsolete. You can still use it, but I've noticed no difference in Fire Surge and Ice Barrage besides a massive cost difference, and the Ice Barrage will stun an enemy and slow it down. When they're walking towards you and you're stopping them from grouping together, it actually slows your kills and your XP rates. So again, I don't recommend using magic, ancient magics, sorry, for this new combat style. Tip number nine. I don't suggest using your blue charms until a double XP week because remember how blue charms are gathered. If you're new, the way you get blue charms is that they are randomly dropped by certain monsters. Now to obviously get 99 summoning, will take X amount of charms. Now, if you do train double XP weekend with summoning, well then you're only going to need half the charms, which means it's half the kills, half the time required to actually obtain the charms, and it's going to be more beneficial. So up until double XP, you can still use your crimsons, your greens, and your gold charms, but I 100% do not recommend using your blue charms until double XP. Even then, I do not recommend using them until you can get to Minotaurs. And tip number 10, last tip for this video. Training any buyable skill without using a portable device, such as a portable crafter or Fletcher, etc. These are new items for obviously returning players and people who have played old school, but we have these new items called portable crafters, Fletchers, as I said. What these do is these allow you to get a higher XP rate and also a chance to save your materials or double your materials while you are training on them. So if you do not use one, once again, you are losing money, you are losing time, you are losing XP. If you want to train any of the skills that have access to a portable helper, you can go to World 84 at Lumbridge in the Old Combat Academy. You will find a bank which is right there and everyone is using their portable items. So there you go guys, that is 10 things that I do not recommend you do when you're a new player or a returning RuneScape 3 player. I hope this video helped you out. I wish I knew these tips when I first came back to the game, but I'll see you guys next time. It's freaking Laser Shark. Adios.